da solo, bene, 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 Ciao Juventini, welcome back to the all Juve cast channel, of course, where it's all Juve all the time, and oh, man, is that ever nice waking up after that victory, oh my god, clean sheet, couple goals, throwing a Fajoli goal there, Kostic yeah. with a hell of a match, oh my god, Simone Inzaghi, tears, oh my god, fantastic. Was he crying? I missed that part, I must have missed fantastic that. I must have morning. missed that too. So we got uh, Anthony, we got Lucci, and we are welcoming Marcella from Juve oh, Empire State Fan Club. Uh, I saw the we saw the video clips. We actually posted one through our uh, YouTube Shorts and everything, and it looked like an amazing time. Marcella, welcome to the show. How Thank are you, you guys? So much. I'm great, guys. Thank you so much for having me today. So excited after yesterday's result, and uh, you know, excited to look back at that footage at the bar because I didn't even watch it yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Looked like a good time. And uh, everybody, again, we're making a big push for the fan clubs because the work that's put in is uh, mm -hmm. incredible and it's great, great times. And mm -hmm. after witnessing it firsthand in Los Angeles, I made it one of the priorities for the channel to shine a light on all the great clubs that are out there, as many of them as possible. And Empire State is one of those ones. So if you're in Marcello's neck of the woods, make sure you reach out. OK, and now let's get to... Uh, Let's get to the goods here. So news, we'll tackle a bit of the news. And there's not a whole bunch today. today. Honestly, mm. uh, still waiting for Vlaovic. Still uncertain yeah. uh, what's going to happen with him if he's going to get into these next two games. Obviously, the World Cup is uh, a big, big uh, uncertainty. But I think he'll be just fine. We'll wait and see. Other than that, Nats in the Europa League, everybody. Juve got Nats 16th in League 1. We should be uh, okay, right? Yep, 1996 all over again, Champions League semifinal. Yeah, so we'll get we into so. uh, numbers and breaking down uh, Nance uh, a little bit later there, okay? But uh, that draw is completed. That's who Juve's gotten. And now we're going to get to recapping a fantastic Sunday. And that was mm -hmm. Juve getting the job done against Inter, all right? So starting lineups, <clears throat> and this is going to come up throughout the show as we get to a very, very uh, hot topic mm -hmm. question towards the end there. Um, real quick, say what's up to everybody out there. Jeremiah, so happy to win. Fajoli, wonderfully consistent again. Rabio horsepower engine and super finish. So the funny thing with Jeremiah is that he, with that Rabio goal, he is now at six all comps yeah. and That's only correct. needs four more between for our Lou and our team to buy this guy a Rabio kit, okay? Because he didn't think we'd hit 10 in all comps. So Poor Lou. Jeremiah's banking. Oh, my God. I believe, so I, believe Lucci, I believe Lucci said this morning, Lou would rather commit murder than buy I that jersey. I did say that. Yep, that is true. But he will buy that jersey. And then we have a guy murder. in our club yeah. wanting to buy murder. that jersey. <laughs> a bet oh is a God. bet, and I can't wait to Poor see Lou. that. That's going to oh, be cool. Uh, and there's a strong chance that that's happening. Ciao from Alex P here. Um, morning, everyone from uh, Wayne here. Absolutely brilliant job yesterday, boys. Well done to all. We're going to get into uh, all that now. So starting lineup, we talked about that, and uh, Max Allegri, mm -hmm. There's a big question on Max towards the end, but the starting lineup, Chesney, we had uh, Danilo, Bremer, and Sandro with Cuadrado, mm -hmm. Fagioli, Locatelli, Rabio, and Kostic, keeping everything in the middle the same, Miletti and Milik. So mm -hmm. on the lineup, really, he didn't have many decisions to make, did he? Pretty straightforward. Nope. Yeah. Was there anything anybody <laughs> would have changed? Di Maria and Chiesa probably can't start, right? No, Limited can't start. Minute. Is that, are you asking me? Yeah. No, no, that's, no, I was fine with the lineup. All of you. So <laughs> pretty good from the lineup. We get in there. Let's see what happens, right? What are we, what have we been saying for a while now? One game at a time. One, One game, game at a time. time. Well, first half, we got kickoff four minutes in and Inter's pressing a bit. Ball falls to Lotaro. He volleys it from the top of the area. Luckily, uh, Lotaro is hit and miss, especially when he plays Juve. And uh, yesterday was probably one of those misses, which was good for us. So he puts That's that one wide. 25th minute, another corner uh, corner kick for Inter. Lotaro actually flicks it on. Jekyll's got a free header. I was worried about that one. I mm -hmm. actually thought that was going to be uh, the first one. 
And uh, luckily for us, uh, Jekko goes wide with it. Juve gets an opportunity through Bremer. And he tries to recreate Giroud's goal for Milan there. Mm -hmm. Man, so close, so close, doesn't fall. The only other opportunity really for Juventus was um, a scramble at the top of the area. Miretti ends up on the ball, finds Quadrado, and Quadrado takes an odd touch. Took a touch out wide rather than attack goal. It's up for debate whether or not he made the right decision or whatnot, but... I, I think know. Nick or Nick. somebody posted that and yep. said, I watched that clip about 20 times and it's, Ooh, I don't know why he took that angle. Yeah, it was weird. Like, but I don't know if he was worried because I think it was Dumfries that was there, right? Like Dumfries closed him quick. No, it wouldn't have been Dumfries. Not, maybe DeMarco. maybe it was the, the angle of the Meretti's pass was a little bit too wide, but it was, mm. I'm not sure why he went. Like yeah, it was. Dem- I'm pretty sure it was Demarco yeah. there on I was his trying side. To find it was. Uh, I was I, to I'm not him. sure why he took that angle. Like it's one touch to goal and have a hit. Yeah. How cool. are you blaming yeah. the pass? The pass was fine. Oh, the pass was money. I don't know if he was, was, that, pass. No. I don't know if he was expecting the pass to be more angled towards goal because he kind of stuttered in and then went out. But no, that's just like, a poor I'm touch. Trying to help Juan his I'm trying brain to help and his body are linked Stop via Wi-Fi, and sometimes. It's you know, dial-up. there's some it's it's dial-up. that was one of those moments anyways that's really it for Juve through Bremer and then that Quadrado one that gets that's blocked awesome. 41st minute and uh, Barella volleys one in front to Dumfries who mm. luckily for us just made an absolute mess of that one and puts it over okay so we finish at halftime let's talk about halftime how were you feeling after that first half of football so I felt like it was good. oh Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, we're going to start with you. you, you start I, w- you yeah. I was, I was going to say this game might end zero zero. If this is the way mm. the game continues to go, because we weren't extremely threatening. They were kind of threatening, but it seemed like we had it a little bit like under control. And, mm-hmm. you know, depending on when the subs came in and how effective they were going to be just coming back from injury, like it could have totally wound up zero zero, but you know, someone, someone shifted the gear in the locker room during halftime. Yeah. I thought it was actually going to maybe end up worse for us. I thought we might end up losing if we kept going on the way we were. Cause we, both teams played pretty cautiously through yep. the first half up until halfway through that first half, 26 minutes, whatnot. Then it felt like Inter was starting to kind of turn the screws and try to put a little more pressure. And Juve kept backing up and backing up and backing up. And I hated that. And then there was a couple instances where I saw Kostic try to move inside of Sandro to allow him that lane um, to actually move forward. Because the two of them sometimes are just right in each other's face and there's no forward progress. So Kostic started to do that, which was a good decision. But Sandro goes up. He ends up losing the ball. And then they come right back at us, almost get a great scoring opportunity. And then from that point on, we never tried anything of the sort again. So the first half, I was like, we just seemed a little bit more uh, fearful than Inter did anyways. That's the vibe I was getting. Lucci, and Lucci, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I thought um, we were kind of lucky not to be down at least one one mm-hmm. going into the second half. But Sometimes you need a little luck. And then, you know, the second half was completely different. We took it to them. We, we took some opportunities. Again, Danilo could have had one as well, called back. But, hey, man, that's we've been waiting for these guys to show up for how long? And, it's, you know, it's about time they finally are playing like you, like a team, like, you know, with some desire. So let's hope they continue that way. Yeah. And to your first half thoughts before we break uh, down. Yeah, the, the only thing I'll add is this Inter team doesn't have that bite that they had two years ago. I never – sense that that that, that killer stroke was going to come from these guys i don't know there was something missing i don't know if it's uh uh lukaku up front who's always a bit of a problem Mm -hmm. now that he's around but you know what i mean like they didn't really have that i wasn't really worried about them i was i assumed it was going to be a penalty or some sort of deflection goal that they were going to get but uh definitely they missed some chance in the first half somebody said here that they should have been down two nothing but yeah hard to argue with that well the part that frustrated me was their best moments still came from our errors. And that's Correct. kind of a yep. sign yeah. that they weren't doing so much, but it was more, you know, us and again, our setup and whatnot. But 
possession wise in the first half we had some uh pretty bad giveaways we had a couple in the second half too which we'll get to mm-hmm. luckily we uh came through unscathed so second half inter kind of kicks off where they left off 47th minute uh a ball getting cleared out to chalanoglo he beats uh Miretti and then has a hit tests uh chesney a um, little bit of a swerve to it but chesney handled it uh off his uh hand and then just top of the bar 51st minute a corner for inter as they uh, keep the pressure on. This one gets cleared out. Kostic, with an incredible dummy, takes this Mm -hmm. thing the distance, finds Rabio, who I would have never in a million years thought he had that finish in him, Mm right-footed, okay, off foot. That was a thing of beauty. And Kostic, my word, my word, um, showing you that maybe cross stitch you know there's a little more to uh cross stitch there that was a fantastic goal um i think that's I the that's, lost that's, on that one go ahead and that's the run that we've been waiting for that sort of assist yeah. is what even team been waiting for with this guy and listen that rabio finish on a difficulty scale of 10 that's a that's a nine and a half to turn that in some yeah. people say he didn't mean to do it i was just gonna say did he mean to do that yes he did Stop. Oh, he t- he totally meant to do it. It looked on, uh, pretty uh, intentional, man. Open the face Stop of that it. foot up. <laughs> I'm like, just trying to support Lou here. Poor guy. All over it. Horsepower, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. That was I mean, I, I saw those two goals he did against Maccabi Haifa, and those were, you know, pretty great. After that, he seems to be on a roll, so... It's okay to say he scored a nice goal, everyone. It's okay. Yeah. It's fine. It's okay to say Rabiot's good. And it's, it's, all right it's to okay say to say good. Quadrado stinks, so you can do that too. I've said it. I, we'll get to that. Okay. Hey, <laughs> take it easy because uh, Rabio um, apparently Juve is looking at that extension. So we'll talk about that after too. Right, talk Lou. about that after too. 70, um, so yeah, that's 51st minute. Puts us up 1-0. 62nd minute. We have there the is. corner kick. <laughs> <laughs> Lou right doesn't count cue. the Rabio goals, but buddy, we're keeping track. And uh, yeah, you might be buying a kit for Jeremiah. Damn, that sucks. This is the corner kick. Obviously, Danilo directs in. Um, I absolutely lost it on the watch mm-hmm. along and then uh, was shocked they were even looking at it. I said, What could you possibly be looking at? Obviously, handball gets called back. Handball. Let's go around the horn here and see what everybody's. Thoughts on, last. on that one. So, Ant, why don't you kick us off on this one? <laughs> Would you like me to start? Okay. That, per the rules, that is a handball. I don't agree with it. I don't, you know, I was just as upset as everybody else. But you, and people are going to say, I don't want to ruin anybody's comments here, but people are going to say, well, his hand was locked in by the defender, it went off his hand. Doesn't matter. You can't introduce gray into the rule. I think it needs to be changed. I don't know how you introduce common sense into the rule book. I don't know if you write common sense, but per the rules, that is a handball. And that, because it was a hit, the ball went directly into the net after that. So that, mm-hmm. per the rules, if it hits a hand and goes in, that's should, now there's other examples of where that happened against us. They should have been called back and they weren't. I get it. But hey, is what it is. You're a Juventus okay. fan. Deal with it. All right. So now that we got Ant's uh, opinion out of the way, Marcella, how do you feel? I just about don't. That? I just don't like the angle that they showed us. For me, it's just about the replay. I mean, I don't know what replay you guys saw on your provider. I know on CBS, all we all we saw was Danilo's knee. You don't even see where the ball is touching. We him. got a good one. Yeah, I That's said they we... did pan out to the side mm-hmm. where you're looking right in. and uh, But then again, you see his arm lock like this, and it still goes by like that. You're, you're banking. All right, it. maybe, maybe I, I don't. I don't think they showed. I don't think they showed us that on on yeah. Paramount. All they showed us was this angle where his knee is blocking everything, yeah. and it's like, how can you even tell from that angle? How do you like if that's the angle that that bar is looking at? How can you even make a decision off of that? Yeah, they well, should remember that, game, uh, that classic right offside uh, image uh, of the goal that would have given us the victory there uh, against was that Salernitana? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So who knows what the hell they're watching in there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Lucci. Your thoughts on that play? Uh, unfortunately, I have to agree with Ant on this one. That and is unfortunate. Um, it's very unfortunate because it would have really helped my fantasy team if Danilo scored that goal. <laughs> and like when your arm's in a arm bar, what are you supposed mm-hmm. to do? Move your fingers? It's nothing you can do. 
Well, that's the part that bothers me. So we just talked about the whole common sense thing for me. And Mm -hmm. I get you might be creating a gray area if you're looking at this and thinking common sense. Because common sense is the guy can't move his hand anyways. So Mm -hmm. where is he really going to put it? What's he going to do? At that point, it should become an extension of the defender at that point if he's just going to latch onto it. The other thing Mm -hmm. is if the defender is holding his arm like that, then guess what? That's a foul because you can't hold. Exactly. So exactly. what are we really doing here? The whole thing was an absolute mess. It was uh, it was a joke. But, should have been a yellow. Should have been a penalty. Well, mm, yeah. exactly. Like, take your pick. Okay, so let the goal stand because he can't move his hand. Or, okay, you're getting called for holding the guy up. Because whether it's his shirt, whether it's his arm, whether it's his leg, whatever, you can't hold. Mm-hmm. So what are we really there's, doing here? What are we reviewing? There's worse holding than that on every corner kick. And yes, but yeah. you're not goal. reviewing the plays end. So if they miss it in live time, yeah. that's great. But when you're freeze framing a screen and yeah. looking at it, make the call. Everybody, everybody's make the call. It everybody's got All right. it I agree. Stop defending that Interista ref. Okay, it's uh, a joke. It's a doll joke in the VR. Oh it's God. always been Juve against oh the world, God. and I want everybody in the live to remember that. Okay, it's us against the world always. Anyways. We didn't need it. We didn't need it. Okay. Didn't need it. We didn't need it. So, seventy third minute, Rabio with uh, a pass that was absolutely shocking. Back to Locatelli, Um, missed him completely. Um, Ball gets to Lotaro and Chesney comes up big there. That was a a massive, massive. That was a massive save. Um, And saves uh, saves us there. Two minutes later, Fajoli. With and then we're going to talk about Fajoli uh, a little bit more Exit. when we get to the match recaps. Um, and this will kind of play into the Max Allegri question. Fajoli finds Kostic with an amazing ball to the back uh, corner there, and he rips this thing, hits the post, goes out unlucky for Kostic, who was having a great game, but he was saved. Yeah, he got a finger yeah, to it. He got a, got a piece of it. it. Yeah. yeah, 84th minute though. We get another counter. This was once Di Maria had entered. Di Maria holds it to like the very last second, finds Kostic. Kostic, I thought, was going to lose it for a second. Uh, yeah. Manages it to just shield off his uh, defender. Lost and then finds Fajoli <laughs> to the far side. And Fajoli's shot takes a deflection off Golsens, who tries to block it. Goes in He'll the net. It. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Fajoli's father pretty much manifested that goal, saying it would be nice if he scored against Inter after his goal against Lecce. Well, there you have it, uh, Marco Fajoli. Your boy comes up uh, clutch again, 2-0. And that's the way it finishes. And uh, honestly, what a second half. What a turnaround. Yep. Unbelievable. Yep. Massive, Incredible. massive turnaround. And honestly, that if we saw that, more often, all this nonsense about Max and the players not being up to quality. Mm-hmm. If we saw that on a consistent level, I think even if we were in the same spot in the standings, we wouldn't have as much, um, you know, negative feelings towards all these mm-hmm. guys. If we just saw that consistently, that was a reminder of who Juve is and what Juve needs to be. That was it. If we can see this more often, Things can get very, very interesting. And there was people writing off the season. There was big accounts writing off the season very, very early. And we were saying October well, 8th. Pump the breaks. Pump I the saw breaks. one on October 8th. Just October saying. 8th. Okay, so October 8th, the, the season was <laughs> over. We're we're great in here, Lucci. I'll if be you're going to think like that, um, you know, that's that's a you're little supporting the wrong. You're supporting the wrong team if you're going to think like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. we're starting to get together. Big, big second half. Now we get to uh, some of the interesting stuff. But before we get to that, we got to have some fun and get that out of the way. And that's AJC tweet of the match. We're going to put this one to vote. Anthony's in there. Okay. But first, we're going to go with uh, our man, Jad, here, who had one. And said, Kostic's desire to cross is the same as Ron Burgundy's need to read everything written on the teleprompter. That's Jad. Here's Anthony's. All UV cast reports that uh, Bremer had a fever and a cold, but told Allegri that he wanted to be there for the match at all costs. Anthony coming in here saying nothing says UV green to like giving nothing. Inter COVID at a boy <laughs> Bremer. So this one goes to team, vote. Baby. So let's see 
who are we who are we going to vote for on the panel? So let's go with this. Lucci, who are you voting for? I'm going for Jat. Going for Jat, just so Anthony won't win. That's fair. Marcella. Yep. yep. I think I'm going for Jat too. Yeah. So am I. Because I was running the main yesterday and I found that tweet and I'm like, we have to mark this one for tweet of the match. So I'll, I'll vote for Jet as well. Wow. Oh, Alex that, P. Alex Take P. it easy, man. Anthony for the win. Oh, Alex, my on. man. Ants like goaded. It. Oh. I'm going to yak. <laughs> Let's say easy. tie. Let's say tie. We'll call it a tie. We'll call it a tie. Man that of the Ron match. Burgundy one, though. Man of the match. This was interesting because. There were some good performances out there by uh, yeah. several players. So, mm-hmm. Lucci, who is mm-hmm. your man of the match? It would have been my buddy Danilo, but Kostic just had an incredible mm-hmm. second half. Just unstoppable. Couldn't, you know, D- Dumfries couldn't contain him. Barella got dummied on that first goal. Mm-hmm. Like, just, it's got to be Kostic. Almost scored his own. His own has to yeah. be. Okay. Mm-hmm. Marcella? Same. Kostic. Absolutely. Yeah, Austin, I think Austin. this might have been his best match of the season Agreed. so far. We have Kostic, Bremer, Fajoli, Anthony. Bremer was a good show too, yeah. Uh, so I, Kostic, Danilo, and Fajoli were all 1A, B, and C for me. I, I think Danilo just in that first half, Yes, he, he locked it down so much in the first half. Didn't really have to do much in the second half, but – I, I, for me, it, Danilo by a hair. He was, he was everywhere in the first half. Man, mm-hmm. I, I had Danilo too. And that goal he scored too. Yeah. Chalked that one up too. He was huge the, mm-hmm. in the first half, especially. And I'm glad and touched on that. He was massive, massive in the first half. Kostic, the whole team was way better in the second half, but uh, it's, well. Tight for me between Kostic and Danilo, to be honest. So sure. it's going to be uh, between those guys. Fajoli had some shouts, but uh, I don't know if Fajoli was up there for me in the man of the match yeah. rankings. Still had a strong showing. Bremer got a lot of shot, uh, a lot of shouts too. Yep. He was uh, looking very, very good. It was uh, surprising to hear he was dealing with, uh, you know, fevers and whatever COVID spreading into Inter. That's cool. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Then he fell, fell to the shouts. ground. What's that? It was Bremer his knee. The grant. It was his knee, and I got so I was yeah. like, "You have to be kidding! Yeah. You have to be kidding me!" That was like, we uh, can't catch a break. A crazy moment because if he would have went down, and then this was the interesting thing too. And I guess we could talk about this now as we uh, get into in the starting lineups. We said we wouldn't have changed anything. Bremer mm-hmm. goes down, and Benucci gets up to train, but to warm up. But so does Gatti. Gatti. So. But Number one, in. who yes, would you 100%. have called upon in that moment? Number one, let's start there. So, Anthony, who would you put in mm. in that moment should have Bremer not been able to continue? My heart says Benucci, but my head says Gatti in that, in that game. It, it didn't have the intensity as, you know, Derby to Italia's of years gone by. Yeah. I, I probably would have brought Gatti in on that one. Yeah, Marcella. Got the hundred percent. I want to agree, but I think Allegri would have put in Bonucci. Yeah, he would have. He would have, he would have yeah. but I, I definitely wouldn't have agreed with that. I think sometimes Bonucci and Danilo have a little bit of like a ego competition when they're back there together too. I'm really not a fan of that of that pairing. I think it's a tough pill to swallow for Bonucci right now to realize that yeah. in the big ones he's been out and he hasn't been the one in there for the bigger game. So I think it's a little bit of a, yeah, a little bit of a hit to the ego there. In terms of Danilo and Benucci, I'm not so sure if uh, you, so you feel that there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a rift there almost between them. I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't love them together in the back line. And I also, not that this like pairing would have happened obviously, but I also hate Benucci and Gotti together. I think that, Gatti, I, I mean, I think Benucci is a horrible person for Gatti to learn from. I would much rather, pa- I would much rather pair Gatti with Danilo, which is why I probably would have gone with him yesterday yeah. over Benucci. Yeah. For me, I would have uh, gone with Gatti, and the reason is, is because what Bremer and Danilo were doing good was once it reached their zone, was just pushing that player and that mm-hmm. uh, um, move backwards 
they were just pressing. Benucci doesn't do that. So at least if you have Gatti, those two could have played the same style and still always pushing that man backwards. Danilo gave Jekyll the business all day. All day. He was all mm-hmm. over him. Jekyll couldn't breathe, for God's sakes. And then when he... Jekyll didn't even want to go over to Bremer's side because of what Danilo was doing to him. He's like, Jesus Christ, if I go over there, Bremer's going to destroy me. So I'm just going to stay here. And Danilo gave him the business the whole time. Lotaro had no link up because they nope. took, they just ruled Jekyll right out. Um, so that was smart on their part as well. I would have put Gatti for that specific reason, but it does go to show. And now we can probably talk about it. Is Max necessarily adjusting with his lineup, with his team moving forward, or is everything he's done so far just kind of out of necessity based on injuries and everything like that? Do we see progress from Max and everything? More importantly, how much credit does Max get in yesterday's victory and performance? So this one got very interesting in the group chat. Uh, a couple Such of a us had to just question, log though. off for a couple of minutes because it was getting so fired up in there. So <laughs> Luca, who wants to kick us off here? Well, Luca always gets fired up. He's uh, first of all, he first of all, guy. this is a this is a subjective question because you can't really put a percentage on. It. I know Luca yesterday was saying he deserves ten percent of the hey, credit. Hey, went up I'm to like, fifty. Crazy. Okay, you convinced him. <laughs> yeah. So we we've sat on this panel here, Al and I, quite a bit, and dumped on Max to say what is he doing? You know, he's been putting out some weird lineups. I will concede that yesterday his lineup was forced based on injuries. Like that was the best lineup he could put out there. I still think he deserves more credit than people are giving him. I don't know what that percentage is, but people are saying that win was all on the players in the second half. And I wholeheartedly disagree with that, that he, he deserves some credit that at halftime he did something that he, it's his team. He has to motivate them. He has to get them prepared for that second half. I think he doesn't get enough credit for how that t- team performed in the second half. I don't think that was 100% on the players. If we lose, it's 100% on Max, and people never blame the players. Mm. But when we win, mm. people don't want to give him any credit. Oh, that that I'm going to agree with. That I'm mm. going to agree with. So here's the thing. 100%. I've been seeing a lot of this uh, lately, and that's that you can't – just blame the coach when they lose and you can't just praise the players when they win. But the thing is, it's how it's how it takes place. And that's what the difference is. For instance, the coach is responsible for what motivating a team, setting the lineup, setting the tactical adjustments, whatever they want to do there. Okay. First half yesterday in the first half, his lineup, we talked about, he probably only had to make a decision with the defenders, with the center backs. I think we can all agree on that. That's pretty and much his only right. decision. Mm-hmm. Um, outside of that, did his game plan work in the first half? Were we the better side in the first half? Were we hurting Inter in the first half? I don't think we could say no. what he did in the first half, setup-wise or anything like that, even if he was handcuffed or not, was anything great. In the second half, what changed? Did he change anything tactically? positionally like that no. all of a sudden helped us Fajoli's is one of our main creators now in this new midfield setup he touched the ball 24 times in the first half in the second half when you know you need a big shift and you need to change things up and you need to start hurting inter he touched the ball 17 times in the second half still managed to get his name on the score sheet and we played but, better but that's not good enough that's not good enough that's not good enough and our first goal, our first goal was Costage. Mm-hmm. It was a corner kick that we cleared out that he went to town solo. So this is shades of Max Allegri 2018 when we were all like, man, we're just banking on our individuals to just do so much and get us over that finish line. Outside of us playing quicker with the ball, that's all I saw change in the second half. And sure, credit if he said, hey, much quicker on the ball. But that's a very small piece for me. So I think it's how you lose. For instance, remember the Inter game where we lost 1-0, but we mm-hmm. were all over them? All over them. That is where Max deserves credit because his game plan, everything he did, worked. The players 
had so many opportunities to score and they didn't do it. That one's on the players, not on Max. That's the separation that I feel when we talk about players and coach. Guys, carry carry on with kind of that. Lucci? Um, I don't know. Like, let's say we go down 1-0. Like, we could have easily gone down in the first half. Are we, are we thanking mm-hmm. Max for giving us the setup? Like, that setup and the style and whatever? You're telling me... He was in the in the the dressing room at halftime giving a speech. You don't think it was Danilo or Bonucci talking to the players at halftime? I think it's more the players coming together than actually Max going out going out in the dressing room saying things. Also, I think we need to give credit to Inter for practically gifting us a win yesterday. They didn't they didn't press us at all in the second half. They didn't do nothing. So again, is that Max's setup? Is it so we got to thank Max for Inter not doing much? Well, was it that? Was it that Inter really get gifted us the win, or did we just do yeah, a better they job? Yeah, two goals in the first half, easily. Right, if, but did we do a better job controlling them in the second? Is what I'm saying. I don't think is they that, gifted did we us really, a win. I don't, I, don't, I don't think they gifted us a win. I think that mm-hmm. we were well. Pre- I think we were well prepared for uh, the match. We go down one or two nothing into half. We're done. I don't think our yeah. I agree. I agree. If we if we if they would have even scored one goal yeah, against us yeah. in the first half, I think it would have been extremely difficult for this team for how sure. they've been playing to come back. But I don't know. I think it's. I don't want to say it's fifty fifty. I think I, 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 I would rather give a little bit more to the players than I would to yeah. Allegri. Yeah. But I don't think it was all. I don't think it's all on the players. Max still has to go out there and you know he he's got to give them something. You know what I mean? He has to put that lineup out. He he does do a little bit of motivating. I mean, I, I don't deny that it was probably Danilo. I don't think it was Benucci at all. Benucci is not a good motivator, in my opinion. Did he He's stumble upon this midfield, though, just because of the injuries? Of course. You tell me if McKinney was 100% fit, he wouldn't be starting yesterday? Yeah, exactly. Well, we're going to find out very quick. We're and find I said, out, yeah. for all those people that are praising uh, Max and Fatuli and all this, I said, hey, just wait because McKenny comes fit. If all of a sudden he slots back into that spot, we're doomed. Then you know. Then you know. Because that's another thing. We're this Fajoli thing, which is help. This midfield just makes sense. Yeah. Rabio, Locatelli, Fajoli. It yeah. makes sense. It plays out nicely. Miretti struggled yesterday, he had a tough game. But mm-hmm. he still helps. He still helps. Once Di Maria takes that spot, things can be very, very interesting. The other thing is... Right, but that's Chiesa, really not Moretti's spot. That's not really Moretti's yeah. spot, right? True. You know, Moretti, Moretti's not really playing in his position right now. He's playing there out of necessity. And I think, you know, granted, he hasn't been having great games, but I think he's been holding his own. Once you put him back into his actual position, I think we're going to see a different different performances from him going forward. But obviously when you put Di Marie in that position, you're going to get, you know, a completely different class player. And that's what takes me back to the frustrations in our actual gameplay and setup though, because Moretti playing there is not far out of a natural spot for him. He's not like, Mm -hmm. it's not like it's, this is a drastic, drastic difference. But for me, when you're watching this team play again, Fajoli can't go through a first half being, you know, 17, 18 touches less than Locatelli and whatnot. Those two need to be the ones kind of pulling the strings. So for him to be that far down on touches kind of poses a problem. Miretti, Miretti had to abandon supporting Milik in order to even get the ball. And mm-hmm. this is why I say Max and the whole setup and thing was really frustrating in the first half. Then you add on top of that, Sandro and Kostic being essentially dead to one another on the left side because of how they were played, Kostic didn't slide in centrally. And I don't even know if that was directed from Max or not, but he didn't slide centrally until about minute 32, 33, before he started trying that. And then Inter countered us, and we just stopped because they just kept pushing us back and back and back. I just, again, I think we're seeing a lot of the same frustrations in Max's teams offensively. So I think the credit for me Obviously, Max gets some credit for yesterday. And mm-hmm. it's not to 10%, like Luca's saying. That's drastically low. Take it easy, Luca. But if I was going to score it on a percentage-based thing, I would go 70% players, 30% Max yesterday. That's how I would score it, personally. And I think 30 is very generous, if I'm being honest, because his lineup was predetermined. But And there's something I'd like, I'd like to bring up here. I know in our group chat, everyone 
I dump on I dumped on Moretti, Moretti again yesterday. I did all the time, literally all I the did. time, always. Because man. you want to play in this, you want to play in this first team. You got to show up. One, he's got to hit the weights because he's just getting pushed over. But he's nineteen. I get no, he doesn't. First have everybody, to I get it. When you're nineteen, he still has probably about three years to grow into it. The weights. <laughs> the one thing, the one this thing I will hockey, defend man. him on. <laughs> you gonna let me finish there, slap nuts? The one thing I will defend him on is that. He was going against some some Big of the boys. better defenders in City. Yeah. So they just showed him, okay, listen, you're not quite at the level to take us on yet. And they kind of they they pushed him around yesterday. So I would not take him out of the starting lineup. I think he needs more minutes. Okay. But there's okay. gonna be a lot of growing pains with this kid. Well, you know, and he's I'm, gonna keep I, playing. I think we should be getting more minutes. He's he's he has to play, but Man. This has been something that keeps coming up, and it's how we treat as a fan base the young guys, and like so many want yeah, all of them to play or whatnot. Like, Marcello, what's your stance on the young guys currently? Um, I think how this would is you definitely Miretti. I think Miretti is probably one of the talents that I can actually get behind that are, you know, the the younger kids. You know, a couple of years back, you know, we had younger kids coming up, and I was like, these guys do not have the stuff, Rugani included. Yeah. Ruga, 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 Rugani was not it. And everybody was talking about him like he was going to be, you know, the best, the, the next best thing. And now even, you know, Gothi starting over him. I And, you know, it's just, I, I think I can finally get behind these young guys. I love Miretti. Um, mm-hmm. Fajoli, I'm having a little bit of growing pains with, but, you know, the, the past two, uh, past two games, he's definitely showed me, you know, a different side to him. And, um, 100%. You know, everybody Everybody keeps talking about Rovella. I don't have a problem with Rovella. If we bring him back, that's great. But, you know, right now I prefer I prefer Paredes in that spot. But, oh, you know, Paredes, really? I, I, that's that's my guy this year. Very, very. I know. I'm, I'm, alo- I'm alone on it. I'm alone You're going to be on that island all by yourself. I cannot it's, help you there. I'm not even sending a life raft on that island. I, I'm oh. I'm all, I'm all alone on this island. Yeah. His best play this I year for us was taking that yellow against fucking Tonali. I have That's to it. ask I what it is with Paredes Marcello yes. that you're question. on this island. Because he is the only player who plays as a regista basso and has always played that position in his career. Allegri is famous for trying to put guys in this position that don't work. I see your tweets, Bert. I know you think Locatelli can play in that position, but he can't. Hey, I've always said <laughs> I know, he's a two-man, I, 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 I know. He's a two-man I, pivot I naturally. And to be honest, to be honest, Locatelli's whatever was going on with Locatelli before, since he's come back, Something he changed. has been yeah. lights out better. Right, well, right, but he's but he's not pl- but he's not playing as a regista basso though. That's the thing. He's because he's we moving. Don't need he's to moving play up that way. We don't have to play. That okay, way. that's 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 one thing though. It's yeah. one thing to say that we don't need to play that way, but it's another for Allegri to insist on playing that way with players who do not belong in that position. I am for Paredes if you're going to play that way because that is his position and it's always been his position. And I know people have saying he hasn't been playing well since he's got here. Now he's injured. Whatever. If you give him time to settle in. He can be a good player for us. I'm not saying he's going to be, you know, the next Capitano. His best years are going to be in black and white. But I'm not not saying that at all. I think he's a great player in that position once he's going to get acclimated to the team. Because he hasn't even played. He hasn't even played yet. But I'm confident that once he starts putting in performances, we're going to see him get better. Does he fit into a 3-5-2, though? Because that seems to be our best lineup. Right, Does exactly. That's the that's the other thing. He, I don't think he really fits into the three the five two. I I don't I don't think he fits that that way either. But if you're going to go with the four three three, then I think he totally fits in there. And I would rather see him in that position than anybody else. Fair enough. I yes. think we made a mistake not keeping Rovella this year. The other thing is, is that why? And this is a question that I brought up in my group chat. Why does it have to be Paredes or Rovella? Why can't they both coexist on the same team and you rotate them? Since when do you only have one person that can play in one position? But this is what I've been saying as of late with the midfield in general. 
two pivots and one attack minded midfielder in there. And you'll, I think we would cook in that manner. This whole Regista thing has been like we've been trying to recreate Pirlo since he left. Forget right. it. Scrap it. I, we brought Pjanic in, who was playing left wing. I agree. Roma, I, and slapped him in there. And I like, agree. This is our I agree. Well, that, that's what I'm saying, is that Allegri has, you know, a history of doing this and putting guys <laughs> in this Regista role that don't belong there since Pirlo, obviously. But if you're going to insist on playing that way, then I'm happy that they actually went in on a Regista. The thing is that now the formation is shifting completely because everybody's injured. So you can't even play that way anymore. You're fa- you're you're forced to play in this, you know, th- in this 3-5-2, but you can only, you know, you have a three-man defense. But even though Bremer said that apparently that's the way they prefer to play, which I thought was a really surprising quote coming from coming from him. Yeah. So if if the 3-5-2 is the way that we're going to, you know, continue on moving forward, and by all means, scrap the register, <laughs> scrap the register roll. We just went in on a player that I've been dying to to get in black and white, and now we're not even going to use them. It's fine as long as the team is uh, as long as the team is winning. But I don't even know if I should say what I what I'm gonna say. <laughs> say it. or maybe it's I okay just to disagree. Maybe we, we just disagree. like yeah. Mute Marcella from me for a second because I feel like Paredes yeah. is the epitome of a mercenary that Ooh. like Juve needs, no, to, that, Juve I, needs to not go with. I mean, everybody has been calling him a mercenary. You, you don't you don't have to mute me because it's nothing I have in a, I, I, I just I feel before. like I feel like he's one of those guys, and I feel like when you start hearing about attitude issues behind the scenes and stuff like that, like I don't like that, right? And right, I don't know. I feel is, like is as, what... as far as your question about Rovella, why it can't be the both of them? The whole thing was right. it was one or the other, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why they loaned out Rovella, brought in Paredes because Max was so heavy on Paredes. But... Right. But that but that was really because of, you know, wages, right? What I'm saying is that if you cut dead weight other in other ways, I mean, Paredes and Ravel are not are not taking in the same salary. There's no way that they can't be on the same team. In that minute where we brought him in, and it was either if we weren't going to get Paredes, then we were going to keep Ravel, then fine. But I really do think that they can coexist on the same team. Yeah, should have got rid of but, McKenny and, and kept Ravel. Exactly. That that is exactly the answer. That is the answer. That's hard get to argue rid of McKenny. Right but also, in, in terms of attitude problems, I wanted to bring it back. Didn't you hear how he was trying to convince Di Maria to stay past a year? That really doesn't sound like an attitude problem to well, me. Because no that sounds like paid him this much. <laughs> That's it. They're going to go back to Argentina and make pennies compared to what they're making now. I also heard that Di Maria was behind, uh, or sorry, not Di Maria, that uh, Paredes was behind the big click issues at PSG and that they couldn't wait to offload those guys. I mean, they're going to be report. They're going to be, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's all rumor hearsay. I mean, you have to, at a certain point, you just have to take their performances into account. And at, of course, at this point, Paredes does not have many, so it's hard to go. It's hard to go by. But yeah, I, think... I have faith. He was my. He was my. He was my pick for the year on the summer mercato, and so I have to. I have to give him the season, and then you know, re reevaluate my position when the season's over. But you gotta give him a year. You gotta give him a year. That's fair. I hope it turns around. I hope he I only hope stays the around. one year. I my one thing with Paredes when he was named is I said, I just don't see this guy flipping the needle for us big yeah. time. No, but the thing is, is that what players were really fl- going to flip the needle for us? We thought Pogba was gonna flip the needle. He's been out he will and will probably be at he will when he uh, plays. Paredes has it while played, but Pogba right. will flip the yeah. needle when he plays. I think Di Maria does for us. Di Maria, I does. think you. I, I I think you have a lot more faith in Pogba than I do. I I don't. Maybe have much. I do, but I bet you I I can I'm, I I would I'm easily say one. and stand behind it. I'll put any wager on it. Pogba will so, flip the needle more than Paredes. Okay, so now who? So now, which one of your uh, which one of your young guys that you love so much are you dropping now for Pogba's spot? Pogba would play where essentially an attacking midfielder would play in the three-man midfield. So yes. in ours, we're playing them three flat with Miretti behind a forward. I think we should play three 
midfielders with two guys ahead of them and yes. put one attacking mid. Pogba should be slightly ahead of two base pivot midfielders. That's what we should do. I, yeah. You got to change should his have formation. Freedom. And whether he starts to. on the left side, that's fine. But he should have the freedom to link up and create in that offense. Right. So my question is, is that now... It would probably end up being Beretti. Right. Mm-hmm. No. Which, 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 I'm not, which I'm not okay... Which I am not okay with. But I like Moretti enough that I don't, want, I don't want to see him dropped right now. Moretti and I think Pogba it's should it. be the ones rotating. And honestly, I don't like this whole thought of dropping. It's not like we're dropping. Max needs to preserve these guys. Di Maria and Pogba, like, you can't just... It can't be this lineup all the time. And this is where we go. You still have to mix in the young guys right but if we that they still need to go and get those minutes so i'm not saying they get dropped completely but if you're well, telling me from the all 11 guys are fit that they're not starters well i think we have a different discussion because moretti has had some struggles i think yeah. but you're telling me when chiesa and di maria are both 100 percent fit after the world cup one of them is not coming in for moretti and they're then both Pogba- starting Pogba would be in for Fajoli, would be my understanding. Well, let's talk about this. Are we staying at a 3 5 2 with everybody I wouldn't, fit? Personal, well, that, personally, I no. wouldn't. You don't think we are? I don't think we are. I'm going ha- to have awful Conte flashbacks if we go back to a 3 5 2. These guys are not BBC. And, it's, and, and not only that, is that you have wingers that need to play on the wing. Like you have Di Maria and Chiesa are natural wingers and you're going to waste them playing in a secondary striker yeah. role or whatever you got going on there. I don't the think three, so. The three, the three, five, two right now is a, is a necessity and yes. should not be the, should not be the way we look going forward. Yeah. It's got to be a four, three, three, four, two, three, one, something along those lines. Yeah. Cause then you can play Pogba as your actual attacking midfielder. Ant, you've been pretty quiet. When these guys are all healthy, those guys, it's crazy to think that they're not going to start. Like guys Chiesa like Pogba, has... Di Maria, Chiesa. I mean, all we still have Europa are... League. No, 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 one's, no one's saying they're not going to start. They might not start in Serie A. They're going to get minutes in Europa League, hopefully. Mm-hmm. I would reverse that. They have to start in oh, Serie really? A. Oh, really? Europa League, let, let's, let's do what we can, but we got to make that push. Well, exactly. We got to put some pressure on Napoli. Well, well, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. You have to let let the young guys play get in the Europa League, and then you oh, yes. put out, and then you put out your fighters in Serie A. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I would, I wouldn't be surprised if, based on what has been happening here, we stay in a three-five-two. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Neither would I. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not convinced <laughs> that Pogba is going to be like a hundred percent ready to come back the second the World Cup is over, though. I'm not uh, saying. That's, I would do it. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised seeing Chiesa as like a second striker. I wouldn't be surprised seeing Di Maria rotate as an attacking, uh, that attacking role like he did yesterday when he came on in behind the forwards. I wouldn't be surprised if you see Pogba replace Fajoli in that midfield and you see Rabio, Locatelli, and Pogba. I wouldn't be surprised if Max tries to keep so, the ah, let's say we... going, to be honest. Let's say we keep I this wouldn't. three five two. Do you play Chiesa or Di Maria in that quadrado spot? It's to get the, to get them both on the pitch. Do you do that? If we're because you can't have this. them both there if you only got two strikers. You, Vlaovic is going to be one, and then the other one. Sandro has been okay, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, he has. But what is Sandro he- lock, locks it up? Quadrado side be it becomes Chiesa. You have that defensive back Costage. Could it happen? It could. I don't like it, but it definitely. I don't could. like it either. I don't really like it at all. Thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. Well, would Max really just throw away what has worked so far while they've just hit a rhythm? What was the tweet yesterday? Someone said Max has used. 50 different lineups in the last 50 games. Yeah, something wild. That is going to continue. That's just, it's going to be another, next 50 games are going to be 50 different lineups. So, well, you know, someone that's else is getting hurt. right. That's not shape and setup because we've been consistent with this now. How long? The three, five, two has been a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So it'll be interesting to see what Max does. And this is kind of the key point now is the rotation because I see all these tweets, pro Max and all this and whatever. I'm fine. People that back Max, that's cool. Hey, don't get me wrong. I've always said all I care about is the team winning, performing Mm -hmm. well, and I don't care who the hell the coach is, to be honest. So if he can turn this thing around amidst, hey, I have my doubts. If he could turn around, that's great. But the rotation is going to be massive. And one of the big questions he has to answer is if he truly, in fact, has as much faith in these younger guys, because now the rotation is going to be key with all these guys coming back fit. Is he just going to put them to the back of the bus and they're kind of done now? Are we going to just bank on these other guys? Has he been banking on guys too much? Has he been given you know, too long a leash to certain guys? I don't know. McKinney's the only one I can think of that has literally been in there way too much based yep. on what uh, he's been giving us. Yep. And that and Quadrado, but there's no one else to play there. Well, and that's just it. Unless we shift everything, you know, but there were shouts for Sule and everything like that, but no way do I play Sule as a wing back. No, he's, you yeah, shouldn't he's even play Kiesa as a wing back. Exactly. So Juan and McKenney have had issues on the right side. That's that's something. But in terms oh. of the other veterans, have they all kind of been subpar? I mean, Sandro as a third center back has been serviceable. Okay, I don't want to get too crazy here. And we should still see him out at the end of the season. Serviceable is a great word. Of course. Serviceable is definitely yeah. a great word. But he's been serviceable, okay, in that mm-hmm. role. Benucci is a vet that has been subpar and i think that's fair to say as Mm -hmm. well subpar from benucci um danilo has been fantastic in my opinion he gets a lot of hate i don't get it he's been great he's been great what about you you think you think he gets a lot of hate really does oh yeah i see it all the time oh yeah all the, the time, the cancel, yeah. the cancel comparison, and oh, all that, that nonsense. But that's so old. If you're, if you're still, still, if you're still, if if you're still on that train, says, then like you're living in like the past. Like move on. You know? Nothing to do with Cancelo. Every word Danilo says is "you are junk." Why are you talking like a leader? You're not a leader. You yeah. you suck. Yeah. Every time, every time he puts, like there's words. He, he's D- Danilo is so much better in front of the microphone than Benucci. Benucci is and the anyone. one who. I, Oh my it's, god! It's wild. Benu- Benucci is awful in front of the mic. He like gives me, he like makes me cringe when he talks in front of the mic. Like get it away from him. <sighs> it's uh, it's one of those things. But Can- delilo has been great. Max, it could be said that he banked on those guys at a certain point, mm-hmm. but because of the injuries that were taking place, you can't really say that Max made a shift to the young guys. Because mm-hmm. right now it still seems like it was just out of necessity. And I think that's mm-hmm. going to be the question that's going to follow Juve along now as everybody starts to get healthy is how much faith does Max actually have in those guys? So he had a quote yesterday. It was uh, in the post-match. And what do he say? He was asked about uh, certain players coming back. And he says, you know what? We'll, do, uh, we'll just play with who we have and we'll do fairly well as well. Stop and people it. took that as if he was not giving credit to the young guys. Mm-hmm. I took nothing out of that, really. But it's funny. When he, this guy starts talking, too, nobody has the ability to divide the fan base like Max Allegri. Okay? It's, it's, it's quite, the, quite the accomplishment when he does it. It's, it's crazy. Because it's very he's very consistent with it I as well. I think he does it for fun. Maybe he's a good chuckle work. out of it. Like a Bill so. Belichick. But it'll be interesting to see moving forward. Nance in the Europa League. How confident are we? We move on. Let's put a percentage to it. And how confident? 100%. Whoa. Beautiful. That is beautiful. Marcella. 75. Oh, you guys okay. stink. Danny, come on. I was also going to say 75, but I'll go 85. 100%. If you're going to go with 75, why don't you just go with 75? I got to switch it up. It can't be the same, you know? Nance in uh, League League 1. 
16th place, two wins, six draws, six losses, 15 goals scored, 22 conceded. Europa, second place, three wins, three losses, six goals scored, 11 goals conceded. This is a good draw for Juve. Um, 90%. 90% we go all the way. Oh, wow. Jeremiah. Okay. Love it. I love it. I love it. I think uh, I'm going to say 95% Juve gets behind uh, Nats. I'd be That's not a bad call because shot. Barcelona and Man U drew each other the next yeah. round. Yeah. 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 Indeed. I, th- Indeed. I think that's that, how how that wasn't rigged. Oh, 100%. I have, I have no I have no idea. The Gazetta was saying with all the teams in the Europa League that it was like a second Champions League and then Man United and Barcelona draw each other. Like, you got to be kidding me. Guys. Hold on. Are we Make saying fig- UEFA might have fixed something? No way. Impossible. We're not you, saying that. You are take we? that back right now. You wash your mouth out with soap. Jeez. Whoever says that. All right. No. It it's never happened. Take it easy, Ever. God. UEFA would never do such a thing. <laughs> No, it's the mustache, isn't it? Yeah. Make it seem like they're all about money or something. No, no, no. Now, storm the barn, everybody. Let's have some fun. Let's get into some storm the barn questions as we start to wrap things up here. Okay, so Luca's coming in here. Do we keep the same eleven for Verona? Uh, guys, might start getting fatigued after two big games. What are some changes you would maybe make to the lineup? Who wants to kick us off on this one? I'll start. I'll kick us no off. changes. I'll... Go ahead. No changes. Next. Okay. Okay. No ahead. changes. Verona with Lazio on the back end of that. Interesting. Three days later. Three days later. But Marcella, short three turnaround. days uh, ahead of uh, Lazio. Uh, one change. Bammer forgot the. Oh, okay. that's it. And everything else the same. Mm. Yep. I'm scared. I'm scared he's going to get hurt again. Like I'm not. It's not for. It's not for how we played. I just think against Verona, you, you can give. You can give Gotti some more minutes. And I'm just, I don't know. We have seen so many re injuries yeah. right off the, like right off the back from them coming back that two games for Bremer might be, might be too much. One, I don't one know. One thing I'll add to that is that I'm not convinced that Bremer wasn't hurt that whole match after uh-huh. he jammed Exactly. His uh-huh. Exactly. At the end of the game, he cleared one. And then he sort of like hopped to the post because he cleared up for a yep. corner kick. And I was like, I I still think he's hurting from that. So yeah, I, that's a good call. But he he may get sweat. But I haven't heard anything today. I haven't heard anything about. Him well, yeah, that's what I. Today. That's what I was waiting for this morning. I thought mm-hmm. we were going to mm-hmm. get some more news about about Bremer, but I think he needs to rest. Just mm-hmm. just save mm-hmm. him because if it's just a little bit of a knock and. We could get him back for you need him for Lazio exactly, and I and I would prefer to have him there. I uh, I'm gonna go on a little crazy limb here and say there's like three changes. I'd go I'd put Gatti in. I'd put um, Bonucci in as well for Sandro and Bremer. Let them rest. I wish we had a sub for Quadrado because he needs a lot of rest and maybe you know for the rest of the season would be Stop nice. Stop it. And I would also honestly I would also like to see Sule get the start for Maratti in this one. Well, he's still in injured, spot. isn't he? Sule? He wasn't even on the he wasn't even on the bench yesterday. I, he had a sh- knock. I think he had that. He had he he had cramps or pulled a hamstring a couple weeks ago. He wasn't on the list, but he should be good to go. He's fine. Actually, for Verona. I just if he's fine, he needs a bit of a rest because he's gonna play, he's gonna play against Lazio. Give him give him a little bit of a rest. I'm kind of on the same lines. I think at the back I would play, but it's Hell's Verona. They're bottom of the table. Um, let's be serious here. Bonucci, Gatti. Yeah, because those have been easy games for us. Well, I know. I was, I, was, I, was just, I was just. I was. I was just about. We are to in rhythm three days now. Later. Let's keep it. Let's keep it up at this level, okay? We're in rhythm now. Bonucci, uh, Gatti, in the middle of the park. Well, really depends on what happens. McKenny is supposed to be fit, but honestly, Rabio is the only spot I would consider McKenny playing. Mm. And Rabio could play every single game. He, the guy's and if there's one thing he's he's got is he's in incredible shape and physical condition. So I really don't care if McKenny plays in there or Rabio stays. The Did you hear that? Stay the hey, same. Well, did you hear that scream? I think that was Lou in Pittsburgh. That was Lou. That was Lou <laughs> screaming I heard him all crazy Rabio for something. <laughs> yes. What was that? The horsepower. So huh. a few changes. Yeah, nothing crazy. And then Lazio is going to be uh, the big one. For mm-hmm. sure. So yeah, some rest has to be given there. Guys, great points uh on Bremer. 
yeah, it's a little nerve wracking when you watch these guys, even when Kiesa gets out there. Yep. I find myself, uh, my heart beats a little bit faster, just hoping that he's okay and nothing uh, acts up, right? Who got red card chills when Di Maria was laughing in the ref's face yesterday? That oh, I did. Oh, I did. Because that I is... totally did. And it's Rain really funny. Face. It's really funny because I, when I got home last night, I rewatched the game because How do at the bar, do that? <laughs> but no, because at the bar, you're really not watching, oh. right? You're worried about a million other different things. You're kind of like trying to just create the atmosphere. So Fair yesterday, enough. I rewatched the game. And I saw Di Maria laugh in the ref's face, and I was like, "How did he not get red carded there?" So I, I watched like, that for the. What's wrong with laughing in people's face? I do it to Lucci all the time. Yeah, you're, you're lucky, lucky I'm not that, actually there because I punch you. That was that was that was <laughs> chilling though. That yeah, was Di Ma- <laughs> Maria is no stranger. I said that when he got his first red with us, obviously in the Bloods of Edge. He's no stranger to those scenarios and those situations. Like that's one thing that he's always found himself in uh in. he's a great player though great player jeremiah says thoughts i will never drop fajoli even if the superstars return take it he's easy he's amazing he adds a different dimension to our midfield he must start consistently thoughts on easy. that um, i don't know if i would never drop fajoli yeah but there you go yeah it's listen hard to argue that I, I will just say that I am happy that Fajoli has proven me wrong because I was I had a lot of doubts about him at the beginning of the year. Me too. He's completely proved me wrong. Mm-hmm. But Poor when guy, the big imagine... guys come back, the bench is right over there. He's but he's he should like be playing five foot five sort of consistent. Too. But yeah, take it I easy think with the short uh, jumps, it's gonna <laughs> these guys that come back. Obviously, a guy like Pogba and stuff like that's gonna be interesting to see how he mixes up. One thing we mm-hmm. can I think safely say is that. Fajoli, Locatelli, and Rabio make sense. Yeah, so okay. when he gets his rotation, it's just a matter of keeping the roles similar to the players. And that might be tough in the 3-5-2, like we pointed out earlier, but maybe Max switches it. But to never drop Fajoli, I will say I'll take Fajoli out of the equation. I wouldn't make that statement about, honestly, any player. Because mm-hmm. one of the things that has bothered me that I like with the young guys coming in is that the spots should be earned and not given. So when you see McKenny falling flat on his face, it shouldn't have taken a McKenny injury to see Fajoli in there. So if we take Fajoli's name out of it, I would drop anybody if their performances drop and they're not, they're not basically helping the cause. Then I don't care who your name is. You got to go. And they have a serviceable replacement. You got to go next man up. Agreed. I also I want to mm-hmm. respond to Luca though. Uh oh. Why? Give, only, him, the, give him hell. No, no, no. The only person Max never this drops one? is is okay. his lover Quadrado. That's actually there are two people. He will never drop Dishio if Dishio is healthy. Uh, oh, who could forget Lord Dishio? It's Lord Dishio, by the way. Lord oh, Quadrado. Lord Dishio. <laughs> so, yeah, that is true. DeShield. We forgot about DeShield. Thanks, Marcella. Thanks. Yeah. Poor bring in, guy. Makes bring in DeShield onto the pod. No. Anyways, that was good stuff. But yeah, as far as Fajoli, uh, I'll put it consistent with all the players. If they're not uh, if they're not up to snuff, it's next man up. And that's one of the things I liked is that the young guys have kind of showed that we need to treat it in that manner. So we'll see what uh, this week brings. We got Verona. That's Friday, I believe. Thursday. 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 So Thursday, it's Verona. It's an then, it's an early one too. Twelve thirty on a Thursday. It's so annoying. Is it yeah, really? scheduling so yeah. unreal. But then we know Lazio, yeah. which will be Sunday, which is the last one before the World Cup break. Okay. Yep. Juve, we said needed six out of these three games. Six points out of these, the they nine, might yeah. uh, get the nine. I hope they do. Uh, Marcella, you want to talk about uh, what Empire State's got going on? It looks like the fifth birthday, which will be the Juve Lazio watch party. Yes. So um, for the Lazio game, we're doing a birthday party for the club together with the holiday party that we try to do every year. We're doing it at a restaurant called San Mateo. We're going to have the game up on the projector, a different spot than when we where we normally do the watch parties. But if you're in the tri-state area, 
and um, you want to stop by on our website, we have the link where you can RSVP. I'll make sure that I send that over to Bert too, so he can tweet it out for everybody. But um, we would love to see you there. We're going to have some great raffles. We're going to enjoy an awesome game, one of my favorites, and um, we're going to hope that we pull away nine points before the end of uh, before the end of the half of the season. Well, that's cool. And that the website, massive the website swing. is. The website is eventusclubempirestate.com. There you go. And there on the go, events everybody. page is where you can find a link to RSVP. But I'll, if you want the, I'll make sure I get the link out to everybody via Bert at the you end of the, betcha. at the end of the pod. I'll tweet it out through the main and everything. And uh, yeah, again, fan clubs are fantastic. Empire State's fantastic. Uh, Joe you, Cappuccino guys. is yes, a member. and Joe. Joe, I think, is actually coming from what I've understood from him this weekend. Oh. And I think that actually Anthony has on one of the items that we're raffling today. I mean, not today, for the for the game. He has oh, it the on. Jacket. Is that the jacket? Yeah. Nice. That's it. That's last right. year's anthem jacket, right? Yeah. Yep. So we will be Very raffling. Cool. Yep. We'll be raffling off that jacket at <laughs> the at the party. That's our hot ticket item. So beauty. One well, thing I'll add is if you can make it out to something like this, please do. Lucci and I put together one in Toronto that was very small, and it's a lot of work. I couldn't even imagine putting together one for New York. So if you can go you out. You did support. nothing. Absolutely. By it's the way. true. <laughs> Lucci did everything. It's okay. It's, it's, it's true. A lot of, a lot work, of work goes into it, so it's very important. Uh, show, show love, show the support if you're in the area. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully Joe Cappuccino doesn't ruin uh, with his appearance. Yeah. I mean, that's oh, what I'm I'm so really... I'm so excited for Joe to come. <laughs> I'm so I'm so I'm so excited. We got him. Um, we got him the Roma walkabout when he went to Torino. He had yes. a great time. Yeah. Yeah, Joe's good. Joe's good. So I look forward to uh, seeing some footage. We'll make sure Joe brings uh, back some footage and has uh, absolutely all the stories to tell on Not the pod. So Lazio is going to be a big one. There you have it, everybody in the tri-state area. Hook up with Empire Club. Okay. Now, that's kind of wraps it up. I want to get to one last point because Yardo right here. Let's oh, be yeah. honest. Max wanted to loan Fajoli out in the winter Mercado. Thankfully, now he can't. Well... Like we covered. I don't know. If he, I don't. I don't know if he who? can. Max. Max can. Max can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Max can do anything. Mad Max. Or... We'll see what happens. Like I said, time will tell. All these questions, still, you know, we have to answer about the team, about these guys when they come fit. Are we sticking in this formation? What's Max gonna do? We wait. Everybody that's still sticking with him, saying, "Hey, just trust the process." I don't think we're quite there yet on changing people's minds. Just wait. Pump the brakes, okay? Did he do all this out of necessity? How much has Max actually changed himself? We have, we have yet to see. One, One game, game at, at a time. time. What I've been saying for two months now. One, One game, game at, a time. at a time. Next mm -hmm. one up. Absolutely. Ellis Verona, 20th in the table. I'll tell you right now, I don't make predictions this far in advance. but Don't. Don't do, Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm Don't doing do it. it. I'm do doing it. it. Do it. Get ready to come here Friday for the post-match podcast and celebrate the victory because we will win that one. Lazio, let's wait for that one. But yeah. Thursday, Juve doesn't drop that one. No friggin' way. And there's no way I'm going to say otherwise when I'm on this high of beating Inter. Okay? Absolutely. So there is no better way to start your week than coming off a weekend where Juve beats inter okay mm -hmm. so i know everybody doesn't want to follow the content of uh inter you know and like their fans and whatnot but yesterday i made a point to just search them out on youtube because it was just a treat to hear them talking about uv beating them it was fantastic oh. all right oh, anthony from edges. inter worldwide is a friend okay He's a good dude but i appreciated listening to him just call Inter embarrassing and pathetic and uh that show that was great that was great you're just reiterating everything we already knew and that's okay so there's a <laughs> shout out to uh to him juve got the job done big win max for everybody that's still on trust the process pump the brakes that's two wins out of 20 in big games okay so okay. let's just wait let's till that number. <laughs> let's wait till we'll that number keeps climbing 
and then we might feel a little bit better, okay? But that was a great, great start. We continue the good run. The defense looks stout. Another clean sheet. We move on to Verona. Marcella, big thank you for joining us. No, thank you, guys. It's been and awesome. Sure we will see you again, okay? Absolutely. And, uh, we'll get some footage from the party. The show, so the watch party, hopefully that uh, is a great, great turnout. Lucci, you were all right. Anthony, thank you, as always. Everybody in the live chat, you guys are amazing. Like the video. Okay, please, please like the video. And don't forget about AJC Movember. We're not doing this, uh, you know, just for kicks. But to be honest. I thought you were, actually. (laughs) No. AJC Movember, you search us out on Twitter. Click on the profile. Hit the magnifying glass. Just type in Movember. You'll see the link. Donate if you feel like it. Okay. Um, we're off to a good start. We're trying to raise 2K. And uh, yeah, we're about a quarter of the way there. So good, good start. I'm going to match quite a bit. We'll make sure we hit 2K. But please, please donate. This, by the way, hey, if Juve keeps winning, oh, I'm geez. sorry, everybody. You might just be dealing with that. Okay. Because I'm telling you, we keep the streak alive. I have no problems. Keep this. And it feels right, to be honest. Your, your wife will think otherwise. It. Feels yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Doesn't feel not, right. Doesn't look right. It's coming off. And I told you, I love it. Hey, you just beat Inter. <laughs> We're clean sheets. Like, babe, this thing might stick around. She's not happy. Yeah. Uh, then she won't be sticking around. She won't be sticking around. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Everybody, thanks again. As always, fino alla fine, forza Juve. Ciao. Thanks, guys.